How's everybody doing? It is uh, Sunday morning, May 26th. Jared and I are on a little bit of a road trip with the with the C5 here. Uh, we're bobtailing to get a uh, trailer. So we got about a half an inch of rain last night. And it's a little wet to get into the fields right now. So we took this opportunity now to run out and get this trailer so we're gonna be there in a little while we're just going by the salt mines here um, we passed this a few weeks ago and we we're making the same trip in the Dodge truck now everybody said the tires were kind of loud on that the trouble with this damn thing is is it rides like a lumber wagon and it's uh yeah, it's rough right. So here's that salt mine again. It looks like they've got some rail cars loaded or something they're gonna load or something. So we're gonna be to our um, destination here in a little while and we'll do a little walk around of everything and get hooked onto that trailer and get back to the farm. We're thinking that we're gonna be able to get back in the fields here mid-afternoon. There's that big old pile of salt. Pretty neat stuff there, huh? I would, I would imagine most of the road salt that's used in the northeast comes from there. I could be wrong, but... Alright, so we're gonna, I think we gotta pull off on our exit up here a little ways and uh, we'll get there and get hooked onto this trailer. Alright, we are uh, taking the back way into Hainsworth Farms right now, running up this gravel road. The old C5 don't care. Uh, where this truck originated from, this truck spent a lot of time off-road. was working in the oil fields in uh, Canada. This, that's where this truck came from, so... Off in the muskie. <laughs> We're gonna break out of this, uh... I could probably shift gears a little bit here, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Now we can see uh, Ainsworth Farms now. So we're going to be pulling in there in a minute, and we'll get hooked onto this trailer. All right, I'm here at uh, Hainsworth Farms. I'm talking to Chuck here. I ended up buying a... Um, 38 foot mass trailer from we were out here what was it three four weeks ago yep. and uh, we looked at a trailer that he had for sale he had this one coming in and we were able to get ahead of the paint department he had ordered it red they hadn't painted it yet nope. and um, no. we ended up getting it uh, painted black to kind of match our uh, road tractors here so uh, Chuck's just gonna start to explain some things on this trailer and we'll just do a little bit of a, a walk around here. Um, this trailer is 38 foot long and it's uh, got six foot high sides on it. So six foot high sides over. with 24 inch extensions. Uh, yes, with 24 yep. inch extensions. Yep. I forgot so to mention little, that. I think it's a little, about 100 cubic yards of space in there is what it's got. We've got a front access panel here for taking a look inside here and we can get front, front access to the trailer and see what's going on inside of it there. It, uh, for service and checking it and then we've got our grease assemblies across the front here which every 12 hours are supposed to be greased and there's I think three grease fittings on each one of these so wherever it happens to stop you can get a grease gun on there and get that serviced across the across the front here and then for chain tensions and adjusting the chain here we've got a threaded rod assembly on this side and then we've got another one over here on this panel here which that's going to be your adjuster for adjusting the slack in that chain over time and keeping it to the proper tension on the unit. So, but, uh, look at the size of that freaking chain. 
<laughs> yeah, the chain is a W82 chain. It's the biggest chain anybody uses in the industry. This chain in this trailer is 900 pounds more weight over the competition's chain in the same size trailer. That's the heft of this chain. And then the crossbars all in here are all tubing crossbars. They're not angle iron. So they have a tendency not to build up with uh, any of the silage on them that your typical uh, L, L bar does. And then a whole a half inch uh, UMW floor in the bottom of it as compared to some of the other ones with a 3 8 floor at, uh, for the thickness of that. Oh, but these access doors, they're the same on each side. Yep, access doors on each side at, uh, if you got to get into it there. Those are nice cabinet doors too, you know, nice handles on them. Yeah, they are Full nice Full length there. hinge. Yep. Then they've got the uh, service door on the side here if you're taking samples on it. You can get in here and check, get a silage sample if you're uh, doing any testing on it for every load that, uh, to access that and get a look at that. Then even underneath there, there's even, there's even a panel door underneath here too. There's uh, for storage underneath there that comes along with it if you're throwing a chain in there or something. At, uh, on the unit, there the, all trailers come come with that panel, that yeah, panel too. There, I didn't recognize that one on your no, other one. <laughs> it was there. Yep. So then they got the air gauge on the side here, so when the guys are chopping into it, they can kind of watch the gauge on here, and you can monitor what kind of pressure or what kind of weight you got in the trailer as you're chopping. It uh, and kind of you know what your loads are and what you're trying to get if you're trying to get the same load on every every one. So all set up with 24-5 rubber, 16 ply. They put a 62 inch spread on these axles, which makes this 38 foot trailer is probably gonna turn like a 34 foot trailer because it's gonna pivot just a little quicker and a little tighter for you with that little bit of spread. And when you're out in the field going across the rough and the ravines there, that front axle is gonna fall into a ravine, but it's not gonna drop because the rear axle is gonna carry the whole load. As Soon as that rear axle is ready to fall, the front axle is gonna carry the whole load. And that's what you're going to get with an air right suspension is really going to float across the field very nice to do that so, and in the back we've got the drive chain mechanisms here which is a number 100 chain that uh, with a parker motor on this side and a parker motor on the other side so we got twin drives uh, operating the whole trailer and then we got a grease fittings here which are going to be greasing the pivot assemblies up here at the top on the uh, on the mechanism here for the tailgate. So that's uh, and then keeping that lubed and then keeping this uh, clean and free of material there. You don't want to let product build up in here, but they've got this point here to let product drop out here also. Heavy duty hooks on the back for when Jared gets stuck. We can we can hook the we can yep. hook the that red chain that we put on the chopper is going to match the red frame <laughs> of this trailer. That's why that chain is uh, red on the back of the chopper. <laughs> <laughs> so then you're grease fittings across the back here, greasing these here on a 12 hour interval here at, uh, for lubrication on that point there. And, uh, get another look at this chain uh, just the yeah the, the chain heft of this just, chain alone just enormous is just huge absolutely gargantuan and what is that that's called open open barrel. barrel center chain open barrel chain so the slop between this has got we've got slop on on each one of these links so they don't freeze up and in, in the off season and rust and bind in there so there's uh, uh, open or uh, tight barrel and loose barrel fit. This is a loose barrel style chain. Gun at the back, you can see the half inch thick floor here on the back for the poly this there is all that the chain poly, is driving on. Yeah, chain. Yep. Is, and I looked this up on the internet. This pin is, I think, 9 16 Is that what it is? I think so. I think it's a 9 16 pin. Yeah, I think it's nobody yeah. in the country puts a chain that heavy into a silage trailer except Moss. Oh. And then the door is an L-frame door, so there's no latching mechanisms or catches on here that's going to hold it because it's all designed as an L. So when it opens, it's going to lift up and the L-frame keeps anything from pushing out to it the way it's designed. Which, we could go start the truck and fire yeah, it up. Yeah, you want to start yeah, that. Uh, fire that truck up and you can uh, throttle it up there a little bit. What normally happens when you're doing this is when you start the truck up to unload a load, the, uh, the first thing that's going to move is going to be the tailgate. It's going to move the easiest because you got weight on the chain. Right now when we fire it up, the chain has got no weight on it, so you're going to see the chain start to cycle. And uh, the tailgate will go up there. Right the the right 
tailgate's going to fall automatically back to home base. No latches or catches, it's just going to sit there and there's no way for that door to open with whatever, whatever uh, product you got in there isn't going to be able to force it open without the cylinders lifting it up. So it, uh, these boys are probably should be able to carry somewhere around 32 to 35 ton of silage probably in this trailer depending on the moisture where you're chopping at. Yeah, because that will hold 100 yards. Yep. So. yep. Yep. So that uh Yeah, that should uh that should about do it. And then the one thing that really excited me was just the heft in uh in these axles. I mean this is this has got some material there, you know that? On oh, this, yeah. it's all this, 5 um, material in here. And then they're using an oversized, I think it's an inch and a sixteenth bolt on this uh, suspension here, where the pivot point is, as where Hendrickson's use, I think, a 7 8. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the uh, swing arm is all custom built, so it's extra heavy over a standard swing arm. And, uh, and then everything slack on adjusters, these axles chambers. is mounted up up on top of the axle yeah so we got a perfect clean line underneath this yes. trailer for not catching anything as, uh, as you're driving through the cornfields which is a nice clean line there yeah it, uh, and then uh, all this all the uh, alignment is all locked in this place once it's aligned the trailer has these locking mechanisms that are going to lock those pins in so even under massive loads there you're not going to mess your alignment up if you have to do an alignment those have to be cut off and made an adjustment on them but they're they're a nice point there of strength and then all four by six tubing underneath here all boxed in and then uh, the rail is sitting on is another four by six tubing and then all the crossbar tubing here is all fully welded on all four sides of it here giving everything as much strength as we can get you just can't beat tube when it comes to building pure strength with something as compared to L frame or L channel the tube is just incredibly strong yeah. So yeah I guess that's gonna wrap this up we're gonna hit the road here and we're going to be chopping in week 10 days so hey when we get home I gotta yeah i'm gonna have to cut hey so well chuck i uh really appreciate you here yep. talking on the video here and yep. uh we're gonna hit the road okay so. boys nice seeing you all right we're better than halfway home with a trailer. We ended up taking Route 20 uh, back. Jared's gonna take the camera here. We took the scenic route back and we are going by Seneca Lake here right now.
we're back at the shop now. We put the 900 on here, the W9 that is. Uh, we went out and got it with the C500 because the C500 has um, egg plates on it and the uh, W900's only got uh, farm plates. We're only allowed to go 25 mile, within a 25 mile radius of the farm. So Jared's gonna go ahead and uh, try this operation on the W9. We're going to go over a couple of things here with it. So, yeah, go ahead, Jared. Raise the tailgate. that we have have the same uh, hydraulic system on them. So this chain is uh, the heavier chain and it is a quarter of an inch the, the links are a quarter of an inch thick and the tailgates just kind of bring itself uh, down and in place and that is going to about do it uh, for, for this here. Alright, that's going to do it for this video, folks. Um, we're going to call it a night. We've got it on the W900 because that's what Jared's going to end up using on this trailer. So, with that being said, I want to thank you for watching. And we will catch you at the next video.